Hello, my name is Caroline Caradieu. I'm a vascular surgeon working at the University Hospital of Bordeaux. I run Nicolas Louis, vascular surgeon in the uh, Hospital Privé des Franciscans in Nîmes, Halsant Group. Caroline, I know that you are a NASAI Guardwire user, just like me. Can you tell us a little bit more about this product? Of course, um, as I launched our complete PTA Guardwire lineup five years ago in France with O14 and O18 size portfolio. The main characteristics of those Guidewires is the ACT1 technology, which results in a one-by-one -one torque response, optimizing control and avoiding weak motion. As you can see on the video, when you torque your Guidewire, you don't have any whip motion. As a guide wires are made with stainless steel, giving you excellent support and durability. You will have different types of coatings depending on the guide wire function, but we will dive into it later. Um, those guide wires completely changed our approach of angioplasty, and I will start with the frontline guide wire, the Gladius. Gladius is a frontline guide wire. It has a hydrophilic coating and a polymer jacket, which makes it very lubricious. It has a moderate tip load, 3 to 4 gram. Uh, Gladius has the Act 1 technology, increasing torque control, and it has excellent support thanks to its material in stainless steel. As I does not only make CTO guide wires, they have the Gladius guide wire, which enables to perform successful 99% of everyday cases. This is a diabetic patient with a lesion on the posterior tibial artery and the peroneal artery. As you can see, the anterior tibial artery is the only one going to the foot, so that's going to be our target artery. And you see that there's the dorsalis pedis with a very tight lesion and very tortuous. So the idea will be to use a, gui a Gladius guide wire, O18, and to smoothly go into this lesion without dissecting the artery. So you don't need any support catheter to do that. And then you will do uh, an angioplasty, a two-minute angioplasty, and you see the result after uh, this, and the angiogram is perfect. So uh, very smooth uh, crossing of the lesion with this wire. I use the Gladius, but Nicola, I know that you're using another type of Gladius, the Gladius MGPV. Can you explain to us a little bit more uh, why you're using this guy wire? Indeed. I use the Gladius MGPV for very complex lesion. It means more than 10 centimeters and when we have very calcified lesion and when sometimes we need to have an, a subantimal approach. As a philosophy of making guard wire to stain the good lumen perfectly match with my daily practice. But sometimes we're facing with very complex lesion and we need to use a subantimal approach. And when you use this subantimal approach, the Gladius MGPV is perfectly build for this kind of lesion. The biggest advantages of the Gladius MGPV, because we have a huge support with the extra support, allowed to use a up and over approach. We can navigate from the up and over approach directly to the origin of the occlusion and start to work in this occlusion. This guard wire has the same characteristic as the normal Gladius. A hydrophilic coating plus a polymer jacket with a very low type, 3 gram, and also you have the technology of the i one increasing the control of the torque. The main characteristic of this guard wire is the micro gap. This micro gap allowed to have a narrow loop. This narrow loop creates a small antimal space, and it's very crucial when you navigate in the subantimal space. On the top of the imaging, you can see the Gladius MGPV navigate in the subantimal space with the smallest antimal space that you can have. On the other movies, you can see a normal guard wire. And more you push on the guard wire, more the loop becomes bigger and bigger, and the subantimal spares are larger and larger. The main advantages of the narrow loop is to avoid a large subantimal space and make easy the re-entry because we are very close to the good lumen. This is the case of SFO occlusion, quite calcified lesion, medium long occlusion, around 7 to 10 centimeters. And you can see, I start to work inside the occlusion with my guard wire straight, but at the most calcified part of the occlusion, it's impossible to continue with this technique. That's why I choose to form with the micro cap the narrow loop and with the good support, with the extra support of the guard wire, I continue to navigate inside the good lumen with the narrow loop and you can see how easily it is to find and reach the good lumen with this technique. We are both addicted with a transluminal approach like the philosophy of Hazai. Uh, when I manage to stay in good lumen with a long calcified lesion, and when it's very calcified, I often use the Albert 
Can you tell us more about this guide wire? Yes, of course. Um, the Albert guy wire is actually a groundbreaking guy wire, I think. Um, when I cannot cross a lesion with the Gladius guy wire, I like to use the uh, Albert. It has a 12G tip load, uh, a hydrophilic coating, and uh, it can slide very well into the lesions while maintaining its position. It gives a good tactile feedback. Uh, you do not have any coating at the tip, uh, and it comes pre-shaped at one millimeter with a 45 degree. Uh, it will optimize its control, especially with the Act 1 technology. Um, I think uh, the manipulation is a little bit different compared to other guide wires, so I would advise that you try to use it first in a simulation system before trying to cross very difficult lesions. Exactly. As Karin said, the guide wire manipulation is totally different with the normal guide wire of CTO. That means we don't use this guide wire with a knuckle technique or with a drilling technique. The learning curve is totally different. We need to work with both hands but separately. The right hand is used to do torque, slowly torque, to move the guard wire inside the calcification. And when we stop torque, we have the left hand, we perform a push, a little push on the guard wire. We change from the left to the right hand separately during the navigation. And with this technique, the name is a push deflector technique, we can navigate like a snake inside the calcification to find the good way to reach the good lumen. I will present you um, SFA occlusion. This is not a so long occlusion, but the technical part of this occlusion is a distal cap very calcified. For this occlusion, I decided to use an Albert 018 guard wire because I want to use this push deflector technique. And you can see, the motion of the guard wire inside the calcification. You can see the guard wire bump on the calcification. On arrow, we can redirect it in the opposite direction to find the good lumen. We always do the motion with both hands to, to redirect the guard wire in the good lumen. To use a push deflector technique, it's mandatory to use a torqueur and also a micro catheter support to increase the ability of the extremity of the guard wire to perform the good motion. The torqueur is used to have a perfect control of the slow motion to reach the good lumen. Caroline, when you face up with a very calcified proximal cap and you can cross the lesion with the Albert 018, do you have any trick to this kind of lesion? Yeah, very easy. I will use the Astato guy wire. So, like I mentioned earlier, the Gladius wire will only have 3 to 4G at the tip load. So, when you use the Atato guy wire, you will have a 20 to 40G. So, you can imagine that you will have a very increased penetration power. It's almost like a needle. So, uh, it will be a very tapered guy wire. And um, the idea is that you will cross the 2 to 3 first millimeters of the lesion with this wire. And then you will want a more control because you don't have the Act 1 technology. So, then you will change for another guy wire, for instance, the Halbert wire, to finish crossing the occlusion. So you will see the astato in action in this case. It is a very calcified lesion in a diabetic patient, a popliteal occlusion, and uh, the astato guy wire will be used just to cross the first uh, two to three millimeters of the occlusion. Then you will change it for a, a Gladius MGPV wire. You will knuckle the wire, and you can see that the, the knuckle will help you go all the way through the occlusion and re-enter into the true lumen. In the end, we have the Gladius guy wire for everyday practice. We have the Gladius MGPV when you want to form a very narrow loop and you want to be in the subintimal space to cross uh, a very difficult lesion. And then you have the Halbert guide wire for calcified lesion uh, when you want to stay intraluminal and uh, you remember that you don't want to knuckle this guide wire and you don't want to drill it either. And then in the end you have the Astato guide wire when you want to puncture a very calcified or very fibrotic top cap. Thank you very much, Caroline, to having me in your institution in Bordeaux. Thank you to all of you. I hope the video will help you in your daily practice to perform complex and simple cases. Well, thank you for coming and thanks for following us today. <laughs>